Hello, I'm Greg Pollock, and you're watching the fifth episode of the Scaling Rails screencast series, supported by New Relic. New Relic's RPM plugin takes less than two minutes to install, as you probably saw in the last screencast, and can show you more about your application than you ever thought possible. In this episode, we're going to be talking about advanced page caching, starting with the topic of pagination, which some people think you can't do if you're page caching. I'll show you why, and I'll show you how to solve the problem. So here's our Rails app again. We're going to go into our controller. I've already installed uh, the Will Paginate plugin for Rails. And so all I need to do is add this one line here, go into my view, and I'm going to add uh, some pagination links in my view. Save that. Now I go back into my browser, do a refresh, and sure enough, there I've got it. I've got pagination going already. But when I hit the next link or click on the numbers, nothing's happening. I'm stuck on page one. Why is this? Well, if you look back up in the URL, you're going to see that it's going to be loading post.html, our statically page cache post.html, every time we go to this page. So how do we fix that? Well, one way to fix that is to go into our routes file and create a new route specifically for our different pages. So we're going to call this route post with pages. The location is going to be at post slash page slash the parameter page. So that'll be where we put our number. It's going to call a specific controller and this particular index action. We save that. Now if we go back and we clear out the cache just by updating a post, go back to the index, and now when we try to go from page to page, hey look, it's working. And you can see down here, if we look in the log, the cache page is at post slash page dash six. And if we look inside our public directory, we can see that we've got a page directory now. And inside there is the cache version of each page. You might also think that since we're page caching, there's no way you can have any dynamic data on your website. But you would also be wrong. There's a way to do that, and I'm going to show you. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a div to our layout. So I'm going to open up our application.html.erb, and we're going to add a login status box. And basically, this login status method, all it does is it randomizes between two different results. It's either going to return, welcome Greg, as you see there, or please log in. Just randomly going to return one or the other. Now, if I go back to an index page, one of the pages that we have page cached, what you're going to see is that's never going to change. Right? It's always going to be, please log in. We can see this because if we look in the public directory, there's that post.html. We can see that it's actually getting hard-coded. So how do we make that dynamic? Well, one way we can do it is by adding an Ajax callback. So I'm going to go back into my layout. I'm going to go ahead and add the prototype library and all of the JavaScripts that ship with Rails out of the box. Then at the bottom of this file, I'm going to add some JavaScript. So this is going to get run on every page that gets loaded up. We're going to call remote function update. I'm going to give it the name of the div, which is login status. And then I'm going to specify I want it to populate it with the results from the login status path action. Just so you know what that does, I had some method in the user in the sessions controller, which just basically returns in line the results of the login status method. So with this new code in place, let's see what happens. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and clear out my cache. Then when I go back to the index method, I'm going to hit refresh a few times. And you're going to see that, hey, hey, it's a page cache, but it's dynamically loading that at the top of the page. And if I've got Firefox, I mean, Firebug enabled, I'm going to uh, click on that. And I can see right here in Firebug that it did an Ajax post callback once the page was loaded, it returned welcome Greg, and that's what got populated inside that div on the page. So just because it's page cache doesn't mean you can't have dynamic data. You can always do these types of JavaScript callbacks. You might want to make them unobtrusive. Feel free to use jQuery as well. Now it's time for a rant. My first rant of the series. And that is 
that login and log out is overrated and overused. And here, here's why. Take a website like uh, Lighthouse. So this is the Ruby on Rails Lighthouse where you can submit tickets. If you look up in the top right hand side of the screen, if you're not logged in, you're going to see this. If you're logged in, you're going to see this, right? So you know maybe that you are logged in or logged out. This isn't needed, especially on a website like this, and in my opinion, it's just overkill. How do you avoid having to do this and the overhead involved in having to do this? Well, take a look at NVCast. Right? Up in the top right-hand corner of the screen, I've got this little bar, and it says My Account Support and Checkout. What do you see when you're logged in? This. What do you see when you're logged out? This. If you're logged out and you click on My Account, well, it's just going to prompt you to log in. Makes sense. So how do you log out? Well, if you click my account, you can see I've sort of hidden the login link in there, right? Now, what is the worst thing that could happen if you accidentally leave your website, you know, your browser open, and somebody gets into there? Oh, they could uh, download screencast to your computer. Oh no! I mean, um, if you go through and you buy a screencast from here, we don't collect your credit card information. You go to PayPal. You still have to enter in your PayPal authentication to buy anything. So there's no reason to worry about people leaving their accounts logged in. Same sort of thing with Lighthouse. What's the worst thing that can happen if you forget that you're logged in? Um, somebody might submit a ticket and improve Rails in your name. Oh no! Like big deal, come on. Now I can understand why it is important in some circumstance to show people their login status, like maybe when you go in your, uh, in your bank account, or maybe like your Amazon.com where they have your credit card numbers on file. But for most cases, login status is just overrated, especially when you're not storing sensitive data. Well that's all I have for the fifth episode of Scaling Rails. Up next we're going to be talking about action caching. Thanks for watching. See you later.